Hi, I'm Jason and this is the Pattern to Print channel. And today what I want to talk about is the slicer called Slicer. Um, Slicer's been around for a while and uh, lately uh, there have been a lot of improvements made on it by Joseph Prusa. Now, I personally have been using Simplify 3D for a number of years, uh, almost since it originally came out, and I'm pretty happy with it. I use it on multiple printers and it does mostly what I would need it to do. But uh, I'm now being involved in a makerspace in Kalamazoo, and we have a lot of you know CMC uh, roast dock printers, and we can't afford to buy several licenses of uh, Simplify 3D. So I started to look into some of the more open source uh, slicers, so that you know obviously they don't uh, cost a fee to to use them. So when I heard it that uh, Joseph Proust had come out with this new um, version of Slicer, I became a little bit intrigued. And what he's basically done is a few things. It seemed that Slicer over the last few years really hasn't been a lot of uh, development on it. So what he did is he did a lot of modernizing it. So he uh, made the code much more efficient so it works a lot faster. He did a lot of improvements on the, um, on the supports. But the big news is that he has this new feature and this new feature is called the smooth variable layer height. And this is, if you can have a picture, if you have a sphere, and at the bottom of the sphere, you, you don't really need a lot of uh, detail when you're printing it. It can kind of be thicker without losing a lot of um, you know, resolution or, or, or appearance. But when you get to the top of it, if you have thick layers, it has this huge stair-stepping effect. Now, if you have like Simplify 3D, you can make uh, different processes, but it's a very tedious, if you, especially when it gets to the top, that stair-stepping step really, stair-stepper effect really becomes very dramatic very quickly. And the previous version of Slicer also had a, a way of sort of mimicking those processes where you could, you know, about these layer heights, the printed this thick and this layer height, you know, once you get higher up close to the top of the dome, you know, make it, you know, uh, the layer um, heights th thinner so you get more of a smooth and you don't have that stair step effect. So what he was able to do, he and his team, they were to, uh, to take that and instead of like really manually doing it by, you know, sort of saying this layer by this layer, he developed an interface where it's sort of you can kind of choose, okay, over this layer height, gradually decrease the layer heights. So I decided, okay, well, I'm going to, I want to try this out. Now I do have um, some printers that run on the, the standard G code, but I have a MakerBot Replicator 2 that runs the Sailfish uh, firmware. And I thought, okay, why don't I see if I could make, teach an old dog new tricks. So that's what I tried to do. And so now let's go to the computer where I'm going to show basically how uh, how to download it and to uh, sort of set up a printer like that to use Slicer. So first, of course, you, you need to download the uh, Slicer program to to use it. And he's got it on his website under the uh, drivers section. Now, of course, this is for all the drivers for his printer and most of the stuff you don't really need. But to get the Slicer version, it's inside a zipped file that has all this. So if you download the zip file, which I've I've already done, uh, and I have a I have a Mac, um, if you any expand it, you know you see all the other information. But the the Slicer application is in there, and that's really all you really need. So you can just sort of delete the other stuff once you have it. It is also available on his GitHub site if you're kind of comfortable using using that site. So once it's downloaded. And you open it up. Um, for me, I needed to set it up for my MakerBot Replicator 2. So uh, what I was able to do is, is obviously the Replicator 2 is a fairly old printer and there really isn't a lot of new information on it. But I did find, uh, you know, just doing a simple Google search, uh, there was somebody who's got on GitHub um, some settings from a few years ago. Now, obviously, there's been a lot of changes and there's a lot more new settings, but I found that by just using, looking at the old settings and ignoring anything new that came out, I was able to map the uh, correct settings for the MakerBot Replicator 2 for uh, the Slicer Edition. And so uh, once I got everything set up, I was able to, you know, bring stuff in. And so for this particular feature, 
something you need to be aware of is there is on the general tabs under the printer settings you have enable variable layer height feature so this is has to be checked now it is checked by default and um, I'm not really sure why you'd uncheck it because you still need to do something it doesn't do anything automatically you still need to um, do the model but um, but this definitely has to be checked one thing that kind of caught me with the uh, replicator when I, I sort of did a, a mustache ring as a test print to make sure I had everything going and uh, as you can see from the photo it printed kind of off the off the plate and what I had forgotten with the bed shape uh, most printers especially the Cartesians their, their uh, zero uh, point is kind of off in a corner and I forgot that with the MakerBots the zero point was in the middle of the bed so I had to sort of take the x and y divided by half and then you know, put it in the origin and then it worked it worked just fine now one of the things you want to set before you kind of work with this is the layer height and of course you know I, I usually have the first layer height being pretty thick and I think that's pretty standard to make sure it kind of sticks well and then um, you still sort of need to put like a, a layer height and this is going to be like the default layer height so you have a range of heights that you're going to use and uh, but this is sort of the the median so under the printer settings under um, under the printer settings under extruder one and if you have a dual extruder then it, you'll probably have two but uh, so under extruder one you have min and max so when you set what your layer thicknesses are going to be for the variable height this is going to be the boundaries like it no matter how much you set it small it's not going to be below the min and no matter how thick you have it, it's not going to be above the max. So you need to set these values to what you want the minimum and maximum to be. So then you just go, and I just made a very uh, simple sphere in OpenSCAD to test this out. So you need to import the, the model, of course. And then once you do that, you want to click on the, the model name. And then once you click there, if you go into Layer Editing, you have this uh, this bar this line over here. So what this line represents, this straight line, is the default thickness. So this, for me, since I set it at 0.2 millimeters, is this is showing these layers are being printed at 0.2 uh, millimeter thickness. Now, uh, so if you look at this, uh, you want the bottom layers to be thicker and the top layers to be thinner. So what you can do is you can uh, go over here and the, oops, I flipped them. The right uh, mouse or the, set, the right mouse uh, button will make that area layers thicker. And so then you drag the line to the right. And notice down here, I had set the first layer to be 0.3 and it kind of, you know, remembers that. Uh, so if I drag everything over here, now one of the things, um, that you can also do is sort of change the range of how um, how far when you drag it over. See, this is pretty wide, and what you can do is you can make take the mouse, and if you scroll it down, it makes the, the impact over a narrower area. And if you uh, scroll up, then you can make it over a much wider area. So I'm going to reset this because it's kind of messed up now. Um, so I want the bottom. And I'm going to make that to be a pretty big area. And I want to move this out so the bottom layers are all thicker. And then when we get up towards the top, I want them to be thinner. So now I want to click the left mouse button and move that out. So when it gets towards the top, it'll be thinner. So if you notice, it's sort of a, you know, you have it thick, 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 and then it kind of, kind of has this gradually transitions from 0.3 millimeters to being 0.1. So if you kind of like the, um, if that's, um, if you're happy with that, then you can do the slice now, and then it slices, and notice it sliced. Well, it's not a very complicated model, but it did slice pretty quickly. So now let's go to the preview. And so let's go to the beginning of the print. So notice here that the first layer is, is 0.3. And as we go up, we will notice that each layer goes up by 0.3. You know, if you add 
each layer. And so if you keep going up, and then all of a sudden notice, oh, that only went up by 0.29. And as we go up, the layers start becoming thinner. So now it went from 0.501 uh, to 0.526, and so now it's down to 0.25. And we keep on going up, and now we're in um, the range where it's going up by 0.2 each layer. So it does that for a while, and then all of a sudden, then it starts getting uh, even smaller. So if we zoom up towards the top, we notice that each layer is now going up by 0.1. So we've transitioned, so we're in the area of the model where we want really thin layers, and uh, we've, we've done that. Now at this point, if you're using just a, a normal printer that just uses G-code, uh, once you do the uh, if you do the slice now and you export the G-code, uh, you're, you're pretty much done. You can use that G-code to, to use your print. Now with replicators, with earlier ones, they uh, used an X3G file. Uh, MakerBot went with a, a variant of the Sailfish firmware and I have the, the actual version of Sailfish. So you need to go from that G-code file to that X3G file. And I'm pretty sure, I didn't have time to mess around with it, I'm pretty sure you can uh, add post-processing. So you could use Slicer itself to export to that X3G file. But I didn't uh, didn't really uh, spend much time to, um, to do that. So I kind of went real old school and I pulled up my, um, my version of Replicator G, the Sailfish, uh, Sailfish edition. And you can, um, you know, load up uh, your... Um, your G code file here, and then export that to a, a um, X3G file. And then you can use that to load that into your uh, MakerBot replicator. Um, so, so how does these things print? So I took these, uh, so what I did is I printed one model at 0.3 millimeters from top to bottom. Then I printed another model and printed it at 0.1 millimeters from bottom to top. And then I did one uh, one of these spheres where I did the the variable um, the variable amount, and I had, so this is sort of the profile what I did for this particular one. And so if we look at the picture for the point three, we see that the layers are, are, are pretty you know they're pretty thick, and you definitely see that stair stepping effect at the at the top. And so this is a pretty small print, and it took about twelve minutes. So then if we go to the, um, if we look at the one that was done at 0.1, it has very, very, very smooth, you know, obviously if it's 0.1 from bottom to top. And this one took, you know, twice as long as, as the first print did. So then if we look at our sort of our compromise print where we said, okay, we want the, the bottom layers to be thicker and the, um, the ones to be, ones above it uh, to be thinner as it gets more to the dome. We see that that it looks, we, we've totally eliminated the stair stepping at the top. And the bottom, I mean, it isn't quite as nice as the point one, but it, it's it's not too bad. And we've only added three minutes, you know, only about 20% longer print time instead of 100% longer print time. So I think this really, this method really does have, um, as a potential to to really have a much improved quality of print without you know without adding a lot of time to the print. So here's some final thoughts on this new version of Slicer. I really like the new feature of the the variable uh, height control. I think it really does. Um, obviously, you can sort of have prints that look a lot nicer without adding a ton of time by using this sort of feature. I really think though that would really make it really great is if somehow instead of having to manually do this, if the program could like analyze your print and analyze your file and say, okay, where should I, you know, have the, the thinner, you know, basically maybe some sort of, uh, logarithm where it sort of says, okay, well, you know, this is the overhang going in or going out and sort of to kind of automatically come up with this instead of sort of having you sort of put these, uh, sort of doing it yourself. I think if, 
if you could do that, that would really, really, really be a great feature and something that certainly no other, other slicer has. Um, if you're using a previous version of Slicer, I really can't imagine anything that would be a drawback of using this new one because it's definitely faster, it's definitely improved, and if you're already using it, it just seems that you should definitely be using this newer version. Um, if you're other, you know, using another Slicer, then maybe, you know, if you have certain models where this, this feature could really be useful, um, you know, I think it's certainly worth a trial. And every slicer seems to have its own quirks. There's certain things with Simplify 3D that I simply can't do with it. That you know, one out of 20 prints, I have to use something else because it, you know, each slicer has its own thing. And I think slice uh, this slicer, you know, definitely is one that you could use to, you know, kind of experiment. So, anyways, um, if you have any questions about what I've covered, if you, you know, anything I didn't. Uh, kind of really uh, explain, feel free to, to ask them in the comments. Um, if you uh, like these videos, please feel free to subscribe and one of these days I'll figure out how to do the and you know on the video itself, but for now just sort of click the subscribe button below. And um, thanks for stopping by and have fun printing.